Well, it suddenly occurred to me after I told them that they could use Charlie's room that maybe you'd like the house a little quieter for a change. You know, less people. No, we don't see enough of Chip and Polly as it is. Well, say, I might be a little late getting home. I suddenly got involved in a project that got me swamped. <sighs> okay, darling. <laughs> Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> Here's some more on the Cooper project. Oh, thank you. I hate to see you work this hard, Mr. Douglas. Can I help you with some of this paper? Uh, uh, yeah, uh, sorry, but uh, no matter how bad this all looks, these papers are right where I want them. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, did you get your wife anything? Uh, what do you mean? It's her birthday tomorrow. I have it on my calendar. Oh, my gosh, that's right. I forgot... Uh, I can't possibly get away to, uh... uh... Janet, I wonder if you'd, uh... I'd be happy to. I didn't ask you yet. You'd be glad to watch. Your wife out of present? Oh, thanks, Janet. Uh, uh, take off early, uh, And why don't you go to Sperry's? Get something nice. Well, like what? Oh, uh... Well, I'll leave it up to you. Just be sure they send it out today, though. Uh, Janet, uh... Have you seen those, uh, stress sheets on the metal components? Oh. And you'd better give me your credit card. Uh, for what? So I can get the gift. Oh, yeah. Uh, any price? Oh, say about fifty dollars, huh? Uh, Janet, uh, get something feminine, huh? Uh, well, you bet, Mr. Douglas. I'll try, Mr. Douglas. Oh, thanks. Check these supplies. With Charlie gone, I'm just going to have to start dinner earlier. Yeah, well, I'll go to the store for you. Barbara Chip tells me it's your birthday tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. It's something I don't discuss anymore. <laughs> well, my birthday's Sunday. We're just one day apart. Well, that's good for us. <laughs> I guess with uh, you being a new bride last year, it's uh, something that just never came up. Yeah. What's Dad getting you? Oh, nothing, I hope. That's just the way I feel about it. I told Chip not to get me a thing. Well, just the same. He probably will. No, I really mean it. I think the whole thing has gotten much too commercial and silly. Besides, we're trying to save money. In fact, I think I'd better tell him again just to be sure that he doesn't get sentimental on me. Hmm. You sound like you really mean it. I do mean it. We're two sensible adults, and we certainly should be sophisticated enough to let a day pass by, which, if we didn't know about it, would be just another day. Yeah, but not even a trinket? No, not even a trinket. Look, why am I darning your socks? If we could afford a trinket, we could certainly afford some socks for you, right? And we didn't get any, so please don't buy me a present, okay? You're really something, honey. Oh, I just remembered I promised Barbara I'd go to the store for her. No present now, remember. Did you buy all that? About a birthday? Sure. Man, Chip, I'm only a guy in high school, and even I know you better get her a present. You said it about being a high school kid. I didn't. Don't you see the psychology of the deal? She talked too much about it. Ernie, you have to talk a lot to convince somebody about something. Now, she really means it. She just thinks she means it. You know something, Ernie? What? The guy gets this cynical at 17. He better go have his head checked. <laughs> You think it's from Dad? Oh, probably. I don't know where he found the time. He's swamped. Before. Oh, oh, isn't that beautiful? Yeah, I always wondered about those things. Aren't they cool? Oh, <laughs> when the right person gives them to you, they're the warmest things in the world. Oh. Happy birthday, all my love, Steve. Oh, <laughs> that's Dad's handwriting. 
Hey, you're running quiet. Oh, that's all right, Chip. He probably called Ferries and told them just what he wanted, and they wrote out the card. I'm surprised he found the time. See? You better buy Polly a present. Ernie, there's a big difference. Barbara didn't tell Dad not to get her anything, and Polly did. Hi. Hi, Dad. Hi, Dad. Steve, darling, oh, oh, I got the gift this afternoon, and it is the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Oh, it, uh, it got here, huh? I opened it, and I, oh, maybe I shouldn't have. I mean, my birthday isn't until tomorrow, but do you mind, honey? Oh, no, of course not. You, you really like it? Mm -hmm. It was okay. Okay? Oh, it's a dream. I mean, how you manage to think about it in the middle of all you have to do is beyond me. Well. No, it isn't. I mean, I am just naturally wonderful, and I am probably not out of your thoughts more than 30 seconds. Make that 20 seconds. I gotta go help Katie with the dinner. Oh, I love you. Well, I, uh, I guess you really liked it, huh? It was great, Dad. Uh, yeah, it was really nice, Dad. Yeah. All right. That is for being a very thoughtful husband. Oh. Uh, I guess she really liked the gift. Liked it? She flipped. Aunt Chip and Polly. <laughs> we already told them. Well... I just had to tell you. I better go help Barb. Oh, Katie, I feel like a creep sitting here with you and Barbara doing all the work. I'm going to help you whether you like it or not. All right? Well, uh, what time did the uh, gift get here, Chet? A couple hours ago. Boy, Mom sure flipped. Yeah, so I've been hearing. <laughs> you uh, saw it, huh? Oh, well, yeah, it was real cool. Polly's birthday's day after tomorrow, but I'm not getting her anything, though. Oh, uh, why not, Chip? Well, she made a big point about it. She's very practical. In fact, if I gave her something like you gave Mom, she'd probably get hacked at me. You think my uh, gift wasn't practical enough, is that it? Well, we can't exactly afford the fancy stuff yet. Would you uh, think it was too fancy? <laughs> not for Barbara, for Polly. Oh. Session 441, please. Hello, Janet. Oh, I was hoping to catch you before she left. Yeah, well, thanks for picking up the phone, Grace. Uh, do you have her home number on the roll file? Oh, that's right, she told me. She's spending the weekend in Yosemite. Well, uh, okay, uh, Grace, thank you very much. Bye. Hi, Daddy. That was a real neat present you gave to Mommy. Oh, you liked it, huh? It was neat. Tell me, Dodie, uh, if you were going to give a present like that to somebody, uh, what would you call it? Drapes. Drapes? Well, I'm sure I wouldn't give Mama drapes. Well, don't you know what you gave her? Well, I, I'm just saying I, I wouldn't call them drapes. Well, what would you call them? Well, I, I don't really know, sweetheart. I, uh, why don't you and Myrtle run along? Maybe you can help with the dinner or something, huh? Okay. Do you know it's her birthday on Sunday? Oh, that's right. She has a birthday, too. Uh, did you get her anything? Got her a nice sweater. Oh, fine. You know, Chip uh, isn't going to give her anything. You'll think of something. No, I don't think so. He's a very literal-minded boy. If they made a bargain, he'll stick to it. Well, at least we didn't make that kind of a bargain. Hmm. You couldn't have picked me out anything nicer. Well, I'm... I'm glad. Uh, where is it? <laughs> well, it's certainly not out in the garage. <laughs> no, I... No, it isn't sort of thing to put in the garage. I don't think. Uh, you don't think it's too, uh... too flashy, do you? No. No, I don't think so. <laughs> the, um... The ivory's a little sharp, but, uh... I get used to it. Ivy? Yeah, you know, where it uh, comes to the ribs. Oh. You don't know, think rust, do you? Huh? Rust. Rust? Why would it rust? Well, if I left it out in the rain. Oh. I wouldn't leave it out in the rain, so that answers my own question, doesn't it? 
The place. No. Oh. Honey. Better friends. It was um, it was really nice of you to remember that I uh, that I had pierced ears. Barbara, you know I don't know what it is, don't you? <laughs> and you don't care? No. You called the store and you asked the saleswoman to pick out something, and then you realized later that you didn't know what you picked out. Well, the way it really happened. Uh, this... Hello. Yeah, George. Well, I put the whole package on Anderson's desk. Well, he knows about all that. What he's concerned about are the specifications. No, George, the specs on the 1217. Hey, Katie! This big thing came for you! It has a million stamps on it! Hey, let's see. Wow, it's from Rob. Hey, oh, Katie. It's a package from Robbie. <laughs> Can I have the stamp? He sent it from a village to uh, Cusco, and then to Lima, and it and then here. And the postmark says that it left Peru only two days ago. Are you going to open it or give a lecture about it? Yeah. <laughs> I printed for it. The mailman said it was special delivery. Delivery. Special delivery. Oh. Hey, neat. Wow. What is it? Well, it's lace. Beautiful. Oh, what does the note say? It's supposed to have holes in it like that. Thanks. I didn't even see this. Feliz cumpleaños, love Robbie. What does that mean? Well, I have to look it up. But you know, what it really means is that that he's thinking about me, even though he is way down in the jungle. Does she hate it? Oh no, honey, she loves it. We women cry sometimes, even when we're happy. But you said not to get you anything. I said not to buy me anything. Oh, come on, Polly. What's the difference? The difference is that you could have written a note or something, maybe burned it around the edges to make it special. Just gone out in the yard and picked some flowers. You know what the real difference is, Polly Douglas? You don't mean what you say. You know what you said when we woke up just a little while ago? What? What time is it? <laughs> when is that a crime? Who's winning? It's about even. Is she crying yet? Ernie, why don't you tell little girls not to listen at doors? I wasn't listening at the door. I could hear you halfway upstairs. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Dodie. If you say I told you so, you're going to be in bigger trouble than you've ever been with me. Telling a guy I told you so is the dumbest psychological ploy anybody can come up with. It causes a frustration syndrome. <laughs> hey, hey, don't you want to hear about it? Not particularly. I'm going for a walk. We never fight, do we? No, we don't. You know why? No, why? Because I do everything you tell me. <laughs> I'm going to call Steve and I... What is it? I just found out what Feliz Compleanos means. What? Happy birthday. Oh, is that all? Oh. My birthday's five months off. Well, honey, you have to think about the original thought. I mean, he knows that it takes a long time for things to reach here from where he is. Five months. Well, Barbie, he doesn't even remember what day my birthday is. Oh, I'm sure he does. No, he's, he's off in another part of the world, and I'm fading from his mind. I know when his birthday is. I get all sentimental over our anniversary. I'll bet he's forgotten that, too. Katie, you're standing here making a case against a boy who sent you a birthday present under very difficult circumstances. He missed by five months. Oh, Barb, I, I know it must sound so silly to you. I, you and Dad have such a, a sensible relationship. <laughs> oh, such a sensible relationship. You don't know how dull that sounds. I bet if you thought about it, you'd find that your husband is about that from being perfect. Um, Mr. Stephen Douglas, please. Oh, oh, Janet. 
Yeah, but this is Mrs. Douglas. Happy birthday, Mrs. Douglas. <laughs> well, thank you. Um, I, I, I guess you know what I got. Was it okay? Yes, it, it was, it was, it was beautiful. It was either what I got you or this lovely hostess type gown. I decided the penwall was more you. I see. Well, um, I, I'm sure Mr. Douglas is busy today, so, so don't bother him. Just, uh, tell him I called and I'll, um, I'll see him tonight. Fine. Goodbye. My three sons will return in a moment here on Our Hard to Work. Oh, hi, Dodie. Where's Mama? In your room. She wants to see you. Oh, uh, is anything wrong? Well, her face is just hanging around. Her face is just hanging around? Yeah. It talks and everything, but it doesn't do much else. <laughs> Oh, hi, Ernie. Are you going to go see Mom, Dad? Yeah. Would you listen to some advice if I gave it to you? Well, Ernie, I really don't care for preconditioning. Uh, whatever it is, I'll take it as it comes. Thanks very much. <laughs> hi. I had some ominous readings on the way up here. What's wrong? I'm a little touchy about something, and I'd like to be alone. Your dinner's in the oven. Would it be all right if I uh, knew what you were so touchy about? Of course. I discovered who picked out my birthday present. But I don't understand. I mean, you knew the store sent it out without my seeing it, and you said that didn't bother you. The store is not another woman. Another woman? Yes! Polly, Dodie, Katie, and I are going out. We'll be just fine when we get back, I think. And don't do anything to stop me. All right? Chip, uh, you better put some soup plates on. This is stew, and the only way to eat stew is with a spoon. Another reason Mom got hacked is because of the bill that came for the nightgown deal. She uh, thought it was too expensive? It wasn't that. She got all steamed because a woman that isn't her could sign on your department store charge. Birthdays can be pretty explosive. Women get all soupy inside, but men don't care much. It's the old battle of the sexes. Polly's still uh, angry with you, Chip? Yeah, she was cooling off. And then Katie's mess happened. And then your mess happened. She got hacked all over again. You know, it's weird. My wife's gone because I did something she told me to do. And Robbie's wife's gone because he was dumb enough to send her a present. And your wife's gone because the wrong person picked out the gift. Man. But nobody ever said women are weird. It's just a matter of degree. How weird. <laughs> How are you going to handle it, Dad? Very simply. What are you going to do? Send them flowers. Send them flowers? Why? Because they're not really as wrong as we men make them out to be. Well, hold on. Birthday anyway. Love, Chip. Merry Christmas, love, Robbie. By proxy. All my love, always Steve. Yes. Note the handwriting. Well, back to the painted desert. Thanks a lot. We really can't thank you enough. And I'm sorry about well you. Goodbye. Goodbye, Chip. Goodbye, Chipper. Bye bye. Take it easy. Hey, isn't that uh, Charlie in the back seat? Well, well, welcome home, Uncle Charlie. Hi, 
Look at well, that. I'll come home. My aunt's bustled. <laughs> hey, pay the guy, Steve, will you, and get my bag? Okay. What? Did you lose my address up north? Well, Uncle Charlie, you're only gone three or four days. Yeah, well, somebody could have dropped me a card. <laughs> On my anniversary. My anniversary, Charlie? Look, we always celebrate the day I joined this family, right? We usually have a cake or something. Well, Uncle Charlie, you were gone. We couldn't have a cake. Yeah, well, the telegram wouldn't have killed anybody. Ah, <laughs> uh, we're sorry. We're, we're sorry we didn't remember. Happy sorry. anniversary, Uncle Charlie. <laughs> You always told me to come here if I needed you. Oh, I'm very flattered. Uh, sit down, huh? Thank you. Have you had your lunch? Yes, thank you. Do you have to go back to the office or anything? Yes. Oh, no. No, I always have time for you, Polly. I hear you're taking Barbara on a camping trip. Yeah. Yeah, we're leaving in the morning. From what Barbara says, she's not exactly Mrs. Daniel Boone. <laughs> Would you believe it? This is her first camping trip. But she'll get along fine. Charlie and I will do all the work, and all she has to do is relax. <laughs> What's on your mind? Well, it's about Chip and me. Nothing wrong. No. It's just that he never really says what he wants. You mean you have a communication problem? Yes. And you have such a sensible approach to everything. I just hope you can answer my question. Should Chip and I have children? Well, Polly, uh, I'm afraid you've just stumped me in my sensible approach. You should see him, Dad. We go to the park to play tennis, and Chip ends up pushing a whole swing full of kids. He shows me baby pictures in magazines. <laughs> he even latches onto two-year-olds at the supermarket. I just know he wants children. Well, of course, I'd be delighted to have more grandchildren. I'm sure we could handle it, Dad. But... Polly, uh, normally I'd have some kind of an answer for you, but this time I... Uh... I know. I guess I just want you to solve it for me. You know, I'm one of your better girl chickens. I have one piece of wisdom I can give you. Discuss it with Chip. That's a sensible approach. I think so. Of course, being a girl chicken, I won't use it. Tell me about the camping trip. Well, we're going out to this great fishing spot we found a couple of years ago. It's a beautiful setting. Well, I just can't wait to share it with Barbara. Share it with Barbara. How nice. Hi, Dad. Well, hi, Chip. Uh, what are you doing here? Oh, I just thought I'd come and talk some things over. Oh. Hey, what is that? Uh, it's a design for a structure of the cell. <laughs> Far out. Have you been reading Flash Gordon comics? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I get most of my ideas from Flash. <laughs> but you didn't, uh, come down here to talk about that, did you? No. What do you think about me and Polly starting a family? Uh, you too, huh? What do you mean, you too? Oh, well, nothing. It just seems to be a popular question lately. Well, anyway, what do you think? Well, Chip, I don't think that I'm the one to answer that for you. I figured you'd say that. You're not exactly a meddler. Oh, I'll as meddle as much as the next parent, but... Uh, Chip, I really think this is something you have to make your own decision about. Dad, you know I'm just thinking about Polly. She's dying to have kids. Oh? Yeah. She keeps dropping hints all the time. I wouldn't be surprised if she started knitting booties. <laughs> Why don't you just bring up the subject to her and talk it out? Dad, I wouldn't be down here looking for a solution if I thought I knew how to use the old direct approach. I don't think that's quite it, Chip. You just want to bounce your thoughts off someone. No, I really wanted a solution. I guess I'm just scared of doing something dumb. 
You won't do anything dumb, Chip. You know, the first person to notice that you've grown up is you yourself. It happens to all of us. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Daddy, you should have to get up early to go camping. Well, honey, you didn't have to get up with us. You could have slept a while longer. It's all right. I was having a nightmare about cell bugs anyway. Well, I found three yo-yos and half a cheeseburger in my high boots. Jody, did you have anything to do with that? I don't know. What was on the cheeseburger? <laughs> Never mind. And Steve, let's not forget to pick up some salmon eggs on the way. All right. If I were a mother of salmon, I wouldn't like you guys fooling around with my eggs. Dodie, the uh, eggs are already in the glass jars. Are you all ready, huh? Well, I'm ready as I'll ever be. Oh, I never realized these shirts were so itchy. We've just been discussing the possibility of a large insect population in Sequoia. Oh. <laughs> well, there might be a few mosquitoes up there this time of the year, but uh, I doubt that they'll be the man-eating kind. <sighs> Yuck, Daddy. Yeah. Yuck, Daddy. Let's get rolling, will you? I can hear them trout calling my name now. <laughs> How about some kisses? <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye, sweetheart. Have a good night. Yeah, we will. Hey, you weren't going to leave without saying goodbye. Oh, we just thought you'd rather sleep, Ernie. Yeah, we didn't think you'd get all choked up. Come on, climb in here. We'll ride three in the front. Have a good time. Don't goodbye, worry. Katie. Everything will be fine. Goodbye. Here. Mm, Bye. Bye. Goodbye, honey. Catch a lot of fish. Bye. 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 See you later. Bye. 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 young for you, aren't they, Dodie? Mm, yeah, I guess so. They don't do what you say, you know. Yes, I know. Hey, I'm gonna go play ball over at Clifford's, Katie. Okay. When will you be back? Well, if Clifford's sisters are as cool as Harry's, probably never. <laughs> Would you try to be home for dinner? Okay. <laughs> oh, uh, what do you say to loan me five bucks? You mean five dollars more? Well, if I brought the new Rolling Stones album over for Clifford's sisters, they'd probably freak it. No chance, huh? No chance. Well, at least I tried. Hi. Hi. Cablegram for Katie Douglas. I'll take it. Are you Katie Douglas, ma'am? Oh, I'm her sister Linda. Ernie. Hey, I'm Katie Douglas. Oh, here you are, ma'am. Would you sign here, please? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Oh, uh, what about the pediatrician's number? You gave it to us. Uh, 476-7310. Oh, Chip, you memorized it. It's very reassuring. What's the matter, Katie? Don't you trust us? Oh, of course I trust you. Well, I know you'll all take care of everything. And how come you've been going out the door for about 12 hours? <laughs> You're right. I guess I'm just flustered. I, I can't believe I'm really going to see Rob. Goodbye. <laughs> Hey, I'll take these up to the cab for you. Oh, <laughs> forget my hand. Have a great time. Thank you. I, I hope the boys aren't going to run your ragged. Are you kidding? This will be a perfect chance to show Chip what it'll be like to have children. I'm going to love it. Well, they can get out of hand a little. Oh, well. Goodbye. Bye. All right. Bye. Bye. Hey, how come you're just sitting there, Chip? Dody, I'm afraid I don't know any bedtime stories. Hey, you can tell these guys anything. They're not too smart. 
tells me this could go on all night. Yeah. Well, honey, I hope you can take care of it, because I've got to go to bed. Good night. Good night. Okay, boys. I'm going to make up a bedtime story, and you're going to like it, and then you're going to go to sleep. All right? Okay. And then when they get some Right. Once upon a time, there was this farmer, and, uh, he, he had a farm. And, uh... He had this big fat pig that could talk Japanese. One day, this pig was going to the market. Thanks, Dodie. Okay. And he told this pig not to dance with any strangers. <laughs> well, this pig disobeyed. He danced the first chicken that walked by. Well, go ahead, go ahead. I want to see what happens. Yeah, well, uh, the chicken had big feet. <laughs> okay, you guys, in the bed. Come on, again. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Are you tired? Mm. Lazy tired. Yeah, that's the best kind. Good night, honey. Steve, uh, do, do you have to turn off the lamp? Oh, sure. You know, the light attracts... Uh... Good night, honey. Light attracts what? Bugs? Well, yeah. Uh, Barb, believe me, there's nothing to be afraid of. Now, go to sleep, huh? Uh... I'm trying to be very civilized and sophisticated and sensible, but there's something crawling over my head. Barbara, it's a spider. A spider? It's moonlight out, and you're seeing its shadow. It's on the outside of the tent. Suppose it digs through. It'd take a spider a lot bigger than that to dig through the tent, honey. Good night. How much bigger? in this room with us. Where? I don't know where. I can just feel eyes on me. Lots of eyes. I just went to sleep. Boys, why don't you go back to bed? Hi, Mama. Look, boys, it's very early. Couldn't you go back to bed just for a little while? No. Oh, then how would you like to come to bed with us? Nothing like a bed full of kids at 4.30 in the morning. <laughs> oh, what day is this? Mm -hmm. uh, it's Sunday. Only one more day to go. Yeah, I never knew a three-day weekend could be so tiring. Where are the boys now? 
I'm sitting in their underwear waiting for you to finish ironing those things. Who's watching them? Don't it? around with this? You could be electrocuted. He got away from me. Oh, that wrecked something. Charlie, you know better than that. Honey, what's he doing down here? Get away from Dodie. And somebody just smashed something upstairs. You want to check it? Yeah, oh, I thought we were adjusting when we got through breakfast without cereal in their hair. Gosh, I guess our reflexes just aren't fast enough. And now you go with Polly and she'll get some clothes on you, okay? It's okay. All they wrecked was Daddy's lamb. You didn't leave him upstairs alone, did you? Oh, oh honey, you think you could dress him? I've got to put my feet up for a minute. Okay, come on, Charlie. Oh. Now they probably got Mama's lamb. <laughs> You can have visitors. Okay. Can I have visitors? What I meant was that if... Oh, never mind. Sure, girls, you can stay. Yes! Yeah, all right! Come on, let's go to my bedroom! Miss Davy, look out! I think my brain is going numb. Steve, did I really do all right today? Oh, you did fine, honey. Just fine. Did many people fall in the stream like I did? Well, I'd say the ratio is about uh, one in three. Well, I'm going to turn the light off, okay? Okay. Good night, darling. Good night. Honey, it's just the wind. Canvas. Shouldn't we be running or something? Oh, an animal. I meant maybe a little ground squirrel or a little chipmunk. Come on. Get out of here, you bum. What's killing you? What is it, Charlie? You guys can relax. It was only a bear. A bear? <laughs> Charlie, it's our last day tomorrow. Uh, why don't you set the alarm for about uh, 5 a.m., huh? Sure, then we can still get in a good half a day's fishing. No, I think uh, maybe we'll start right home early and uh, have a nice, easy drive. Okay. Good night. Good night, Charlie. Good night. Thanks. You're welcome. driving home at night. <laughs> Good night. Chip, mm. I have that being watched feeling again. Oh, no. Come on, you guys, cool it, huh? Greasy junk. Oh. Well, what do you want us to do, Margaret? Maybe if you make us all some chocolate milk or something, she won't feel so rotten. Hey, yeah. Chocolate milk usually makes me feel real good. <laughs> okay. 
Come on, kid. Okay. Why should tonight be any different? Come on, you guys. <laughs> Under the covers. <laughs> Do you mean to say Katie went all the way to Peru and back while we were up in Sequoia? A wire came and she left Saturday and just got back an hour ago. Oh. She's upstairs with the boys. But that left you alone with Dodie and the boys. That was the least we could do. You look like a wreck, if you don't mind a candid observation. <laughs> no, not really. It was real easy. I mean, the boys were very good and Dodie helped a lot. A couple of lamps were broken, but Chip fixed them. <laughs> Where is Chip? Oh, he uh, looks a little beat, too. Looks like he was hit with hurricane triplets. <laughs> oh, Polly, you were just wonderful. I'm dying to go up and talk to Katie about Robbie. I'll be right back. See you later. Polly, uh, do you still feel the same way about uh, wanting children? For Chip's sake, I mean. More than ever. <laughs> But I think we're going to wait till I have a couple years nap. <laughs> well, I guess we should go home, but I hate to wake him up. Don't wake him up. Come here. Hi, Bob. Hi, Steve. I want to talk to you about something. How are you with bowling? Bowling? <laughs> I don't know why, Bob, but I, uh, I've never bowled in my life. I used to set up pins when I was Well, then you know what a gutter is. Oh, yeah. And you can lift a bowling ball, I think. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, if you're talking about the executive bowling team, Bob, uh, I literally have never bowled in my life. Let's start with a premise. I think the executive bowling team, the whole idea of it, is stupid. You do? I do. But I'm stuck with it. Because my predecessor once bowled a 260 game and decided that intraplant bowling would improve labor management. Labor loves it. They've beaten us six years running. Why shouldn't they love it? <laughs> uh, Bob, uh, where do I fit in? I mean, uh, I really have never bowled. I mean, I, I can't even keep score. Neither can I. Labor keeps score. Maybe that's why they keep winning. <laughs> How about it, Steve? Now look. Garrison's sick. Tedasco's in Seattle. And Grantlin twisted his ankle on the sprinkler head. That leaves you. But, Bob, I... Steve, you don't have to be any good. They win anyway. <laughs> okay, Bob. I, I uh, guess I better do a little practicing, huh? You can practice tomorrow morning. Okay, Steve. See you at the party tonight. Uh, wait a minute, Bob. Uh, tomorrow morning? When is this tournament or whatever it is? Tomorrow afternoon. <laughs> See you at the party, Steve. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm a bowler. <laughs> so much for you, Margaret. Ooh, you're such a rotten creep. And next time I see your shadow, I'll jump all over it. You tell her the next time that she tries that stunt, you're gonna clobber her. I'm gonna clobber you next time, Margaret Spencer. Ooh, you're such a rotten girl. I just might get sick from it. Oh, it's okay, Mama. It's just creepy, Margaret. <laughs> and when I jump on your shoulder, your legs will fall off. Dodie, you hang up that phone right this minute. I 
I think it's time for us to have a little talk. You sit right down there. Yeah, well, don't punish the kid until you find out what happened. There is no excuse in the world for unladylike conduct, Charlie. Now, what have we always said about being a lady? You don't have to wear white gloves to be a lady. And? And ladies always control themselves. Themselves. Now, do you think that you used control with Margaret just now? No. Margaret copied a whole test from Dodie and got an A. Yeah, Mom, and I got a D. And the teacher said the tests were so identical that somebody had a copy from somebody. And Margaret goes, Dodie copied from me. Yeah, and Dodie got clobbered. Honey, there are other ways of expressing your feelings without yelling and acting like some kind of a wild creature. All set. Well, say, Charlie, tomorrow morning, will you show me how to hold a bowling ball? How come? Because I'm in a bowling tournament. You? Me. <laughs> come on. Honey, I think it would be a good idea if you called Margaret back and told her you were sorry that she yelled at her. Oh, yuck, Mama. Well, you think about it. I mean, when I was a little girl, I had the same quick reactions and competitive spirit that you have. But I had to change. We all do. As your mother says, Dodie, think about it. Good night. Good night, Good night Charlie. <laughs> Robert and I were at a party at the Lemmings. You know, the party they gave to the governor. And um, they did something there that we'd like to try. It we men really should be out practicing our bowling for the tournament tomorrow. But yes. Sylvia's right. The Lemmings played a simple word game, and I thought we'd try it. it it's a simple thing. It's, it's, you know, where one team writes down a, a saying or a book title or, or something, and the other team has to act it out. Charade! Sounds like a terrific idea. Oh, well... Uh, the Lemmings call it association, but I'm sure it's the same thing. <laughs> Shall we try it? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get a pencil and some paper. Yeah. A fish. Yeah, uh, uh, it isn't a fish. Is it a fish? Uh, just nod your head. Is it a mackerel? Is it a big fish or is it a little fish? Uh, how many syllables? Uh, um, okay. Uh, uh, you're swimming. You're swimming. You're swimming in the ocean. In the ocean. Uh, is it the Pacific? Is it the Atlantic? Uh, the Suez Canal? Uh, it's a pool. It's a river. It's a sea. You're looking in the sea. You're looking in the ocean. And you're in the... Uh, you're in the uh, oh, I have it. I have it. I have it. It's, 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 it's the sea. 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 Okay, sea. All right. Uh, let's see. How many... Uh, is that the first word or the middle word or the last word? Okay. It's six. Six words. Six words. Um, and the first word is what is the first word? Da, 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 da. Okay. The, and, the, and the second word is uh, as as it. Uh, a B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P. Oh, 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 oh. Okay. Second word starts with O. Second word starts with O. And it's O. And it's uh, uh, it and starts it's with O. Oh, yeah. uh, what is it, Sylvia? Oh, she's got lumbago. Is it lumbago, Sylvia? No. Oh, I think maybe Are you did. being old? Old. 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 She's being old. 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 Okay. Old. Be old. Be old. And so many. And the. Uh, and C. Uh, the old man and the C. <laughs> All right, Steve. It's you. Oh. Well, Bob, you've done it before. Why don't you... Uh, oh, come on. Oh, we'll oh, never get this. Let's see you. Uh, Nine uh, words, right? Uh, Barbara, what was the sign for the... Oh, I remember. Uh, it's a song. That's right. Honey, honey, you can't talk. You can't talk. Uh, I am sorry. Uh, Row, 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 Pigeon and the hawk and the condor and the eagle and the hummingbird lived happily ever after. Katie? Yes, honey? Does everybody live happily ever after? No, but they should try to. Like Margaret? Like Margaret. How come do you think she did such a rotten thing to me? Oh, maybe she was scared. Maybe she thought she might flunk. Maybe she had nightmares about flunking, so she copied your paper. And then when it looked like she might get caught, she panicked. 
Is that a king like getting real scared? Yes. I'll bet she's not sleeping very well right now. She's quite aware of what she did to you. But that's enough talk about the subject, okay? Okay. okay. Poor Margaret. Yeah. Poor Margaret. Good night, Pumpkin. Good night. Katie? Miss Honey? Am I being a lady, just like Mommy? Just like your Mommy. <laughs> Girl? Is that what you're doing, dear? Oh, three? Three something. Uh, uh, the second three syllable. syllable. Three syllables. First. <laughs> oh, oh, crazy? Uh, weird? Uh, defective. Mad? <laughs> oh. The second syllable. She's pushing something. Oh. What's she doing with her <laughs> finger? Oh, what word are we on? Uh, so far we only have mad. Uh, oh, she oh. hurt her ear. Oh, no, oh, something it wrong sounds with like, I oh. think. Uh, which one did we give her? I forget. I must say she's doing very well with whatever it is. <laughs> it must be an animal. Is an animal here? A donkey? My three sons will continue. I see Mark. Nobody made a fool out of anybody. <laughs> I was a little surprised, that's all. I bet you were. I mean, uh, well, I've never seen you as anything but under control. Yeah. Well, it's a problem I always had, but when I got older, I, I just could control it. It's just that competition just starts the adrenaline flowing. You ought to see me at football games. As a matter of fact, why haven't I? Why, why have you never wanted to go to a football game? Guess I always wanted to avoid having you see me go ape in public. Oh, Steve. Did you see the look on their faces when I did that Mademoiselle walk? Uh, well, no, I didn't. I, uh, <laughs> I was watching you. Just can't take you off to parties, that's all. I mean, she'll make a nut out of herself every time. Honey, look at me. Now, number one, nobody was offended. They were a little surprised, as I was. And number two, I, uh... I like you the way you are. How can you? Well, it's not too hard. I, I, I'll prove it to you. Next season, we'll, uh, we'll go to some football games together. I'll sit right next to you. I may wear a crash helmet, but I'll sit next to you. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, we talked about this all the way home in the car. And we talked about it downstairs, and we talked about it now. I think we're all talked out, wouldn't you say? I just want you to know. I want you to know that I'll never disgrace you like this again. I mean, when I think of myself lying on that couch like a rag doll, I just... Oh, how can I be so dumb? I guess we're lucky, though. How do you mean? I mean... 
They might have given me something like the naked ape to do. <laughs> this is Joe Landacre, captain of the team from Assembly. Hi, Joe. How are you? You don't ball, huh? You sure you aren't slipping in a ringer on us, Mr. Anderson? No, no I, I borrowed the ball. As a matter of fact, this is the first time I've been... I mean, I... Uh, I am both quite well. <laughs> right. It's only a game, as they say. Now, over here is Angelo. That's Frank. Skinny one over here is Toomey. Guys, this is Steve. Well, good luck. Oh, uh, thanks, Joe. Steve, is your wife here? Well, she's coming down. I don't know that she's here yet. But, uh... Oh, yeah, there she is. Steve, I, I don't know quite how to say this, but will she do a lot of yelling? <laughs> I can't guarantee anything, Bob, but this is her first bowling tournament, too. Well, it's just that the boys got a little nervous and they wondered. Oh, forget it. Forget I said anything. We always lose anyway, so what difference does it make? <laughs> Did you want me to talk to her? Is that what you had in mind? Well, something like that, I guess, but forget it, Steve. Maybe that's been our problem. Maybe we need a little enthusiasm around here. Well, can we get started? Yeah. Uh-oh. Here we go again. The slobs against the snobs. <laughs> the new one. <laughs> His name is, uh, Steve Douglas. He holds the ball funny. <laughs> Yeah, spell it right this time, will you, Frank? L A. Well, you might as well start, Joe. Yeah, why not? Excuse me. Steve, you have another one coming. Oh, that's right. That's Steve. You're starting on the wrong foot. Start on your right foot. The right foot? Well, Charlie told me to... The right foot, huh? Steve, don't throw a hook. Try throwing it straight. <laughs> I was trying to throw it straight. Okay, then try throwing a hook. <laughs> Four steps is okay. Concentrate, Steve. That and a dime's worth of donut centers will get him exactly nothing. <laughs> Catching up with them? I think so, dear. I think Steve is beginning to remember what Charlie told him. I mean, he almost had a strike a minute ago. 
Almost doesn't get the cigar, honey. <laughs> Come on, baby! Right in the pocket! Right down the pipe, honey! <laughs> Here's where we get nine pins back. He's got the delivery of a stork. <laughs> right down the pike, honey! <laughs> he gets another chance. I believe so, dear. <laughs> you get another ball, Steve, right down the pipe this time. <laughs> hey, I didn't think you had that much blood in you. <laughs> I'm Hattie Landaker. Oh, I, I'm, uh, I'm Barbara Douglas. That's my husband, Steve. I figured. <laughs> Follow through this time, Steve. Get him out of here, please. Right down the pipe. Right down the pipe, Steve. <laughs> Katie. Well, how was the tournament? Great. Steve got a spare on the next to the last frame. Well, who won? Uh, they won, Katie. But it's the closest the executives have come to winning in six years. We'll beat them next year. That's right. Well, does anybody mind if I take a nap? I'm suddenly drained. <laughs> Honey, I don't think we ought to buy those football tickets. I don't think either one of us could stand it. <laughs> <laughs> Just wait till you get a shadow. I'll jump all over it. <laughs> oh, you're the creepiest girl I ever had for a best friend. Darling, this is the problem I was telling you about. So is he. I don't like you anymore, Margaret. And I hope your hair turns green. <laughs> well, it's um, one subject I'm not very qualified in handling, so she's all yours. Uh, thank you. All right, Dodie, uh, say goodbye and hang up, huh? Goodbye. I guess I hollered at Margaret. I guess you did. Why? She was supposed to get all guilty and she didn't. Well, Dodie, whether she's right or wrong, uh, we'll have no more hollering, okay? Yeah, I know. I have to be a lady. That's right. Like Mama? Uh, like Mama.